do is uh, play with a few drops of water here to demonstrate some of the various properties. Now, the behavior of fluids in zero gravity uh, apparently has uh, caused a lot of interest amongst people who do design work in, uh, uh, that deal with fluids in design work. And they're very interested in the, not only the dynamics of fluids, that is, how they behave under motion, how they oscillate or how they recombine, say, when you put two drops of water together, but they're also interested in the spreading and wetting of the fluids when they come together to enable them to better design some of the uh, laminated or sandwich type materials which are used throughout the computer industry and also are used in manufacturing items for space flight. What I'm going to try to do now, and I'll move over here to the side and you'll probably just, just see my hands working, I want to um, try to free, free float, that's free float, a bubble of water and and do some oscillations in it and i'll try then to get two of them in the same area and recombine them and uh, in order that you may see what happens when two drops of water come together in zero gravity and we'll also uh, look at these bubbles of water that are resting on the surface and see how they react and I would also uh, try to get bubbles of water to recombine with these bubbles that are resting on the surface. I'll also agitate them mechanically by forces and also try to uh, stir them up a little bit by introducing vortices or vortexes or jets of water with a hypodermic needle and also by just blowing on the water with a surface straw. We uh, have sort of, with all this is just water and this uh, bubble here has uh, pieces of onion in it in order to, to better see the motion. The rest of this is relatively clear with a small amount of ink added from one of our uh, marking pencils. an item in this monitor, that's why I'm hitting it, trying to get the thing to float out of the way so I can see what's going on. Yeah, if you don't mind, appreciate it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is try to free float one of these bubbles and agitate it as I was doing earlier. And that's the one on the string down here, Jerry. You can center down here on this uh, wire hook. There you go. You can get it just a little lower. That's good, real good, right there. Uh, what I have here in my hand is just a, a wire bent into a sort of a horseshoe shape, but I have two small uh, surfaces of wire here to better enable me to uh, handle the bubble of water, I think you'll see the problem I'll have. I won't be talking much because this is uh, this requires uh, quite a bit of work, but I am going to try to, to float this bubble free from the string and then sort of bounce it around with a wire. We'll see how much luck I have on it. Okay, now I've got it free. Uh, what I'd like to do is to get it to more or less remain motionless within the field of view that you have there and then get it to stabilize so that it's not jiggling around so much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bounce it with these two long pieces of wire that I have. Okay, let's give it a wrap on both sides. Okay, you know, work it back down in the, better in the field of view and do it again. Okay, I'm going to let it try to stabilize. You'll see that it does not damp easily. That is to say, it just keeps jiggling for a long period of time. The damping constant for this uh, water droplet is fairly long. Okay, it's fairly stable right now. I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Okay, now I'm going to wrap it again from each side with these two long pieces of wire. What I would like to do, and have not been able to do so far, is to get a perfectly symmetrical oscillation going. That is, hit it 
evenly from both sides with the same amount of force, you'll see that I can work the bubble around by moving the wire through it as I go. And uh, I have not developed the skill necessary to, to really do this properly. I'm going to try this once more. Let it get stabilized here. But you can see that it does oscillate for a fairly long period of time. Okay, looks like we're just about in the center of the field of view. Bring it back over. Try once more. This is not not working out quite as well as I'd like, but um, we have a fairly limited time. Now, you notice what I'm doing here, if you're still in the field of view, I've actually introduced a sort of a rotation in that. Okay, we'll try it once more. No, I didn't get it quite opposite. Comes up again. Okay, I'm going to try something else. This will actually attach to this wire, and I'm going to hold it right down in the view of you. Uh, almost crawled around on the side there. I have to be careful it'll crawl, if the, uh, the bubble will attach itself to the entire w wire and I'll have trouble getting rid of it. Okay, I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to jerk on this. Now I've got a, a fairly symmetrical oscillation that time, but still not quite what I want. Okay, I'm going to uh, call a halt on this. Uh, this, is, uh, this really takes a long period of time and quite a lot of training, I might add. Okay, I'm going to pull one more bubble out into the, to the arena. I can get it off the thread. Now what I'm trying to do is maneuver two bubbles of water here in the same area, get them reasonably stable, and then push them together. Okay, now I've got, uh, got myself a little problem going here. What I would like to do would be to get all three of these together if I can. Can you still see them all? Yeah, just, just remain there. Okay, what we have here are three loose bubbles. You have them now. Okay, I'm going to try to take this little bubble and put it over here. Oops. There it goes. Did you get that one? Son of a gun. Okay, let's tell you that, take the two bubbles again. Okay, here come two bubbles together. You got them now, Jared? We have two... Okay, we have two bubbles here. We're going to try to get them together. Okay. Yeah, one of them's behind the other one. Let's see if we can get them over here to the side so you can see this. Okay, I think we're going to get them together here. Missed. Okay, I think we're going to make it this time. Actually, I think they're touching and bouncing apart, which is sort of interesting. Okay, I'll get them up again. There we go. Okay, now we have two bubbles joined together in one. I'm going to put the one back on the um, string here, I hope. Missed. All right, now I will, um, I've encountered this problem before, so what I'm going to do 
is remove that bubble from the surface below with a uh, hypodermic syringe. Yes, I am. That's not going to work too well. Okay, let's do it with a uh, another syringe. We're going to remove the bubble with a uh, syringe. And I will reattach it to the uh, thread. Now, very quickly, I'm going to uh, agitate that bubble with uh, an ordinary soda straw. Now, one of the problems I have here is that the soda straw has more surface area for the bubble to attach to and the string, so it will follow the uh, soda straw. Okay, can't quite get it to stay there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give up on that one. Uh, what I would like to show you now is the uh, agitation of the uh, and the uh, response of the bubbles that are resting on the surface. Now, the the bubble here that uh, we have that I'm pointing out with the soda straw has uh, small bits of onion particles in it, and I'm going to blow on the uh, the bubble and try to induce a rotation in the bubble. Okay, the rotation isn't exactly symmetrical. I'm going to get up above now and blow down on the uh, bubble. And I can actually blow it into a donut. Now I'm going to give it a couple of puffs so that you can see the dynamic response of the bubble. Okay, sort of oscillates there. Give it one more. Okay. So the surface tension is hold, holds it together quite well. I'd like to do one more demonstration here. I would like to take the uh, the hypodermic syringe, withdraw some water from a, from another bubble of water I have. and then inject it into the, uh, the bubble that we've been looking at to try to see what reaction it has with the, um, what reaction uh, occurs inside this bubble here. Okay, I'm just about to uh, insert it. I'd rather squirt the water in. Okay, now I'm squirting the water in. All right, you notice it deforms, but always it reassumes the spherical shape. Now, very quickly, what I would like to do is attack, add water to various surfaces to show you exactly how the, um, this will be right over here on this corner, and the purpose of this is to show you how the water attaches to various surfaces. I have a piece of clear plastic, which you can only see by the highlights here. I have a piece of metal from one of our food cans, and I have a piece of paper, which is uh, right in here. So I'll add a drop of water to each one of these items, and we'll see what sort of shape the, uh, the water assumes. Okay, I'm adding it to the clear plastic now. All right, I uh, wasn't too sharp there on my aim, but you will notice that the uh, water still assumes the, the hemispherical shape. The dome shape, I'll add a little bit more to this bubble.
okay, no change. Now we will very quickly add some to the uh, to the metal surface. I got a little bit too slow there in, the, in ejecting the water, and we had quite a few bubbles float free. Now I'm going to put some on this paper surface here. And I hope the bubble shows up. It'd be better if I had black paper. Now this bubble is much flatter, and I'm going to try to take this off and show you. I think you can see the, the doming on the plastic and also on the metal. But on this paper here, the water makes a very low dome, and of course it will eventually soak into the paper, and indicating a much faster wetting of the surface. Now, one of the th very interesting things and in, that... Uh, we noticed in, in uh, playing with the, the water here, is I, I had a need for a container to hold the water while I was um, preparing these uh, test sites. And I came up with uh, a little container here, which is actually one of our, our jam inserts in a can, which holds the quantity of jam we have. And this turns out to be a very nice container. You'll notice in zero gravity, you've always been told you can't put water in a cup because it'll roll, it'll just fall out. Well, here, I'm, you see me, I'm stirring this around. I'm actually rolling this around inside this, and it stays in. In fact, I can actually drink out of it. I can drink a couple of swallows. And if you will watch this next maneuver, we have water guns that we use to, to drink. We use these during our meals. And I can actually, I'm going to take a drink out of this first to, to take some of the water out. So um, I'm going to move down here so that you can see that I'm actually going to drink it. And this is uh, a d difficult operation to do in zero gravity. Every time you try to take a drink in zero gravity, of course, the water just goes every direction. And, and this, the, uh, the water is contained in this container so strongly that I can actually squirt the water in it with this water gun and it will stay in there. Now that's going in there with some degree of force. So in the process of actually doing this uh, experiment, we uh, we discovered a fairly interesting fact. Now I'm going to take a drink of uh, the first, really, first cup I know of that was actually been used in zero gravity. Works fine. And I uh, suggest that maybe we... Uh, we in NASA might take a look at uh, something like this. In fact, I've made a couple of drawings here I'd like to show you just to sort of end this up, uh, what can come out of one of these uh, little demonstrations here. And this is a cross-sectional drawing of a cup. Uh, this is sort of crude. I'm not a real good artist. But the idea is that you'd have the handle of the cup here, and this is the container. You'd have to have a sort of an insert here coming up. And, uh, of course, that uh, destroys quite a bit of the volume of the cup. But it still would enable you to have a certain amount of volume. Of course, this is like you slice right through the center of the cup. But something on this order might actually work. I don't know if it would or not. Uh, this is a fairly small item and is only good for a couple of drinks. But at least it, uh, it's an interesting thing to, to consider. Well, this sort of more or less um, ends up our discussion of uh, behavior of fluids in zero gravity and the dynamics. And once again, uh, the, uh, the behavior of the fluids that, uh, in, in zero gravity here can teach us something. In fact, it can even uh, reveal certain properties of water droplets, which are of very great interest to the meteorologists. They don't quite understand how the water droplets recombine in a thunderstorm. Another thing, it, it could have application in, in things varying from the deposition of emulsion films for photographic plates, which, of course, can be used in everyday life, x-rays, this sort of thing, or it can be used in very sophisticated uh, computer components and sandwich-type uh, construction techniques. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been a lot of fun for me, and I've, uh, I've gotten a big kick out of it, and I, I'm, certain, I'm proud of my new invention here, the zero-gravity drinking cup. Cheers. I'll go get the recorder.